I was reading about Liquid and it's been around for uh, several years now. And I always thought it was really fascinating because it basically enables uh, different assets to be issued while utilizing the underlying Bitcoin network, uh, like the decentralization and the security. Um, and Samson, you were integral to uh, you know the creation of the Liquid Network while, when you were over at Blockstream. And so for our listeners, maybe we can just go into some of the basics. You know, what is the Liquid Network and what was your goals when you were kind of building that out? Sure. I was actually integral to Liquid before I joined Blockstream. So Oh, really? Wow. Uh, the, if we take it way back, the genesis of Liquid, I think, was like 2013 or 14 when um, Greg Maxwell and Adam Back were theorizing about sidechains on Bitcoin Talk. And it was later formalized into uh, a white paper. And that was the, the basis, I think, of Blockstream's uh, founding, which was to build on top of Bitcoin. And the first part of that puzzle was building Liquid, a Bitcoin sidechain. So the concept of a sidechain is that it's just a, uh, a blockchain that's parallel to Bitcoin, but anchored to Bitcoin. So that chain has no other native currency. The native currency is still Bitcoin, but pegged into the sidechain. And by that means you have a, uh, the exact same cap as on Bitcoin. So you can only create Bitcoin on Liquid if you lock up Bitcoin on the main chain. So it's always a one-to-one -one relationship. So 21 million Bitcoin. 21 million potential liquid Bitcoin on liquid. Mm -hmm. And it also came with a lot of other innovations too, such as confidential transactions, which allows for you to um, hide the asset type. So if you think of Bitcoin as uh, having one asset, BTC, liquid can have multiple assets because there is a, a flag for different asset types. So liquid Bitcoin is the first one because that is what pays for transaction fees on the network. But then you can issue things like stable coins or digital securities or a game currency or anything you want, because those are simply just assets on the network that are, have this other flag to it. And the beautiful thing is it, it's default confidential. So when you make a transaction of liquid Bitcoin, you don't really know if someone is sending liquid Bitcoin or Tether, USDT, or the INF game currency or a digital security. So that increases the uh, privacy of Bitcoin in uh, a large factor. So let me see. The other thing with Liquid is um, the, I guess the, um, well, I think I covered it. It's asset issuance uh, and yeah. confidential, confidential transactions, but also the reliable block times too. So Liquid has one minute block times. Um, it's based on block signing, not on mining. So the Federation of 60 plus members has a subset of 15 members which serve as functionaries and they're running the uh, the liquid functionary node which is a, a 1u rack server that they keep in their data center and this is signing the blocks of liquid every single minute so you have this reliability that there's no variance there's always one minute for every single block so you can actually use liquid for things like payments at this time but down the road 10, 20 years, it'll probably be too uh, too expensive to do so. But for now, you can still use Liquid for payments and it's quite effective. But um, yeah, the, the role I had in Liquid at the beginning was really um, joining as the, one of the first members. So I was the COO at BTC China, which was one of the biggest exchanges back in the day in 2015 and before. So I remember meeting with the Blockstream guys because they were trying to get people to sign up for Liquid and the first members, I think, were uh, us, BDC China, and uh, Bitfinex, and um, I think uh, Streamy, uh, which is uh, now known as Gopax, which was acquired by Binance, and uh, a few other ones. But we were one of the first exchanges that signed up for Liquid. So I think that's my contribution, <laughs> just uh, helping bring <laughs> it into the world. Yeah, very cool. Um, so from my understanding, the Liquid side chain there's this two-way peg between the bitcoin main chain and the liquid side chain and you either you know you peg in or you peg out if you want to take the liquid and then get the bitcoin you peg out and that requires one of these like liquid federation members which i believe you know digital james wallace at the company over there is one of those you know federation members that kind of helps with this mechanism to peg in and peg out can you can you explain um 
either one of you guys kind of what it is to be a federation member and what their role is between these like peg in peg out uh with the liquid side chain sure james you want to take that one or do you want me to continue well yeah but we're um we're a federation member we're a member of the boards and and, and actually a functionary as well and i think that uh you know samson you, you do a much better job of explaining the peg in peg out because that's a fairly technical thing mm -hmm. yeah so if you think about it the peg is um a sort of bridge and there is a risk there if you look at uh the world of DeFi projects and ethereum and those types of clones you always see that they get looted and usually more often than not it's uh people attacking that peg or the bridge that uh, that links one chain to another chain and uh, the way that liquid avoids that issue is that there is a peg out authorization list which gives you a key so you have to be on this whitelist of individuals or sorry members that can actually peg out but the members themselves can offer that as a service to their users so one example is uh, sideswap they do liquid swap services and if you're using their app then you can peg out take your liquid bitcoin and leave the uh, network and convert back to bitcoin and they do that in a trustless manner so even though there is a dimension of um, permission you have to go through a member the members themselves can offer that permissionlessly to their users so anybody can peg out through sideswap they can't really stop mm -hmm. you from doing so but you still have that level of security because no one can just um, attack the peg and drain it because if you look at what liquid is it's a multi-sig wallet there's three thousand something bitcoin in it right now um, and potentially an attacker could drain that so the authorization system the pack system prevents you from having a bad actor coming in and just withdrawing everything at once um, because it's only limited to the whitelisted members and it's also not difficult to become a member of liquid if you think of Li liquid it's like it's like a fediment fediment is very popular these days right mm -hmm. and a fediment is really just you and your friends choosing to make a federation liquid is a federation that is made up of um, companies and typically exchanges um, and these guys are operating servers in data centers so you have a certain degree of reliability and uptime that you don't necessarily have with the fediment federation which may be more ad hoc and people running something in their basement so i think the the similarity is there that they're still both federations it's just liquid when it was created back in the day it was it was more pragmatic to make the federation out of um, these robust entities rather than just a, a collection of people that you know. Mm -hmm.